Shema Yisrael, Yehova Mekadishkem, Yehova Nisi, Yehova Leolam, Yehova Sebaot, Esha Shalom, Yehova Tira Vehetov, Uvishmo Tishvea Vashem Yashua Ariel Yahuda Ariel Beitlehem Hanat Saret Kiryat Arba Kiryat Jawim Engedi Mahanaim Bahurim Hebran Negev Ariel Habeit El Ariel Atishbe Ariel Ayerushalayim Ariel Hamaretz Israel Ariel Hagoyim Ariel Hamaretz Fait Vashamayim our gracious, mighty, everlasting Father, Yehovah, Mekadishkem, the Elohim of Israel, who is also the Elohim of Shamaim, the Elohim of the entire universe, receive glory and honor, and be praised at this moment in time. Thanks for receiving our thanksgiving and praises from the land of the living. Times have changed seasons have arrived we are in man ought to put their trust in you you are the true friend you were a friend to abraham and there was no time that he had anything to say contrary to believing and trusting in you you showed yourself to be a true friend unto him and he in turn was willing to give not only his life but even the life of his own son this is how true you are to him and in turn he decided to do the same back by having such deep faith in you unwavering steadfast true firm faith in you who had called him from ur of the kasdim ur of the chaldeans at the age of 75 years he did not give up he went all the way to a hundred years without a child till ishmael showed up bible by Hagar, and a few years later, 12 years later, Isaac, the promised one, was born. And he lived to be 175 years, full of years, full of your blessing, having seen your goodness in the land of the living. Receive glory. Teach us to be true friends. Teach us to find the true friends. It may not be many, but may your grace cause us to arrive to that juncture where we enjoy the grace and the fellowship and the walk and the oneness of a true friend. The kingdom has been yours before Genesis. It is yours now. It shall be yours all the days of our life, even beyond Revelation. Yahshua is our Messiah. In him, we move, live, and have our being. Receive glory, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your grace upon each one of us in the land of the living. Thank you for meeting us at the very point of our needs. Be exalted in the highest. Hosanna, it is in the highest. Hosanna, it is in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in your name. Baruch Ata Yehova Eloheinu Melek Haolam. Amen ve Amen. Greetings. 
grace to you, favor and mercy be your portion in the land of the living. I want to touch uh, a few points on uh, true friends and uh, friends who I refer to as not so true. Others call them fake friends. Others call them uh, artificial friends. Others refer to them as seasonal friends. But in this life, we need to have true friends. Or a true friend, at least. I, I read the pages of scripture and I discovered that my fathers in faith, from Adam, Noah, Shem, Eber, I come all the way to Nahor, Jared, Enosh, you travel all the way to Abraham, Isaac, Yaakov, Moshe, Aharon, King David, Josh, Yehoshua, Joshua, and many other uh, believers who went before us. They all suffered in one way or the other in this area of friendship. It's not easy to find a genuine friend. This is what I've come to realize. But be as it may, friends are people who are mentioned even in times of death. You'll hear in almost all eulogies that the family will spare some times to allow friends to speak. They will be on the newspaper. They'll be announced on the radio, on television. Stories will be told about who was the friend to so-and-so. Who was the closest to so-and-so, to such and such a person who has died or who has suffered in certain tragedies there will always be someone who will be searched out and people will identify that person as a friend to the deceased. So the word friend has to be taken serious because your position, your place will be mentioned even after the death of your friend. You will be called forth to speak and you have to be true. You have to be genuine. You have to marry with the words you will utter on that day. There are people who have spoken at the death, at the demise of their friends, and the people had issues with them. They said, how was he his friend? And yet he did A, B, C, D against his friend. How was he his friend? We doubt this friendship. We have some reservations on whoever has been identified as the true closest friend to the deceased. These are challenges, challenges that people have faced in funerals. These are challenges people have faced in weddings. These are challenges people have faced in graduation ceremonies. When one is called forth as being identified the best friend to such and such a person, there are those with dissenting voices. They immediately protest and say he wasn't his friend. He wasn't his friend. The following are five points. There, there could be more, there could be even more, much more points that can be given, but I just want to mention five briefly after reading this particular verse in uh, Proverbs 18 verse 24. Baruch Atta Yehovah Sidikenu Melek Haulam Proverbs 18 verse 24 it reads
17, 17, I'm sorry, Proverbs uh, 17, verse 17. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. Uh, it says, A friend loves at all times. A friend loves at all times. And a brother is born for the day of adversity. Now, there is a line that has been drawn to, divi to divide between these two people. And uh, it's not a coincidence that a friend and a brother are being mentioned in one verse. Now, when you look uh, this scripture critically, then you give weight to a friend. Why? Because he's being mentioned on the same line verse with a brother whom you have been born with. So scripture says, your blood brother may only avail themselves in the day of your adversity. But a friend, scripture says, is there at all times. He is there for you at all times. And this is why he even precedes your brother in this particular verse. And I've mentioned earlier that when you see something preceding the other in some verses, there is a spiritual significant meaning to it. And here it says that a friend loves at all times. And the Hebrew word there is in plural. It says at all times. That is who a friend is. But a brother whom you have been born with will only come on the day of your adversity. Can you imagine the difference? There is a big difference. It is my brother I expect to be there for me at all times and not my friend. But scripture is giving uh, uh, a friend who is true a higher rank. And it says... There is a friend who can be there for you at all times. All times. Now, when I was looking at the word at all times, I realized it's broader and wider. There's a lot to be mentioned. And I may not uh, compile them in this one or compact them in this one uh, uh, particular exposition. But I've really appreciated who a friend can be and who a friend should be. I've also learned if I'm a friend to someone, then what am I supposed to be just by reading this one verse? People have lost their lives because of their friends. Their friends betrayed them and they were killed. Their friends betrayed them and they were assassinated. Their friends betrayed them and they lost their job. Their friends gave their location and they were kidnapped. They were shot dead. They were robbed. Their friends betrayed them. And something that turned or changed their lives for the worse happened on that particular day. And all can be traced back to the person they refer to as their friend. So you must be very, very careful. You must look at these traits and virtues if we are to pick a friend. When Messiah started out with his disciples, he referred to them as his servants. And then later on in John chapter 15, verse 15, he says that if you do the will of my father, there shall come a time 
when I will not only refer to you, I will no longer refer to you as my servants, but I will refer to you as my friends. So the highest rank in the kingdom is not even a bishop. Can you imagine? It's not a bishop. People think the highest rank in this world is being called archbishop or right holy reverend bishop doctor so and so. That is not the highest rank. The highest rank in the holy scripture is to be called the friend of Elohim. The friend of the most high. Abraham was a prophet. According to Genesis, he was a prophet. But if you read the scripture keenly, he attained the level wherein Elohim referred to him as my friend. James chapter 2 and verse 23. That he believed so much, he increased his level of believing the Most High to the point he was no longer a prophet. We only know him as prophet, father Abraham, the man of faith, the father of faith. But we rarely address him with the highest rank given in the scripture, the friend of the Most High. Do you know you can be a neighbor to someone for 30 years, 30, 40 years, 50 60, 70 years, you can be a neighbor to someone. But you do not have as much information as his friend who may have known him for 15 years. But you have known him for 60 years. You have been neighbors, immediate neighbors for 60 years. But you have less information compared to his friend. His friend has much more knowledge, much more information much more insights about them why because the highest rank i have come to discover in scripture is the rank of friendship there are friends who are there with you for their convenience when it is convenient for them to be with you they will be there for you but when things go south when things go haywire they will desert your friendship. They will betray you. They will give you out. They will turn their backs on you. And this is why before you refer, before you label anyone as your friend, because that's the highest rank in this Holy Scripture. This is what I've come to realize. I know of thousands and thousands upon thousands of Servants of the Most High, Elohim. I've never seen anyone refer to himself as, well, I am friend of, I'm friend of Elohim, so and so. Like, for example, people would say, I am bishop, so and so. I am apostle, so and so. I am prophet, so and so. I am teacher, so and so. I am elder, so and so. I am deacon, so and so. You see, people love those titles. But they forget that there is another title here. That is scripture. It is scriptural. It's biblical for you to refer to it with it. For you to refer yourself with it to the most, towards the most high. But then I realize, oh, that title is scarce. In the churches, in the assemblies, in the ministries, that title is scarce. In fact, I have, I have not had anyone refer to this to themselves by this title that I am friend so and so of Elohim. I've never had. Why? It is the highest rank you can have. You know so much about the Most High. He reveals so much to you. Things pertaining to Him, His kingdom, His ways of doing things are made plain to you. When for others it is a struggle to receive revelation, to understand certain chapters, understand certain prophecy, because you are a friend, that grace, that grace touches you. And you tap in 
to the source. And you understand, you grasp this revelation. A friend loves unconditionally. They have this unconditional love. This is why Messiah said unto the apostles, There will come a time I will no longer refer to you as servants. Because a servant does not know what his master is doing. They don't know. They have to be told that tomorrow we will be doing this and that. They have to be, they, they have to wait for this information to be passed over to them. But a friend is privy to what the master is about to do. It is a friend who leaks information. It is a friend who knows in advance. And this is why to have a true friend, you must test them. You have to test before you trust. I'm telling you, you have to test people before you can trust them. We have weird people in this generation. People are shrewd. People can, can camouflage. People can pretend. People can do their best to conceal who they really are. Even in marriage, it has to grow to the point where you are now friends. But why do we have problems in, in marriages? 95 percent, 98 in fact, percent of marriages are in shambles, are in, are in deep holes, are in darkness, are passing through the storms. Most have been wrecked by the storms. Why? The husband is not a friend to his wife. The wife is not a friend to, his, to her husband. They are rivals. They are enemies. You've turned into an enemy to your husband. You act like an enemy. You don't act like a friend. When a mistake occurs, you act like an enemy. You act like a rival. You are in the forefront to destroy your man. You are in the forefront to destroy your wife. You are the first to raise the sword and the spear and the bows. And, and you begin shooting the arrows against your man. Before the public and then you want to remain in the same marriage with joy it can't happen it will never happen you will not experience that joy marriage is spiced up when you become a friend when you act like a friend and you know when you have a friend even from school in the from the days of school in in, in nursery primary secondary university college training anywhere when someone is a dear friend to you, you go slow. Even when you've heard they've wronged you, you go slow. You give them that space. You give them the latitude to understand what really happened for my friend to do this to me. You go slow. But what happens in marriages? People are not willing to give their friends latitude. They're not willing. They're ready to attack. They're ready to shout. They're ready to publish you. You know, everywhere. They're ready to call people and pull you down. They're ready to tarnish your image. They're the first ones to send messages. You know? North, east, west, south. And you're living with them in the same house. They crush your morale. They crush that, that, that grace that has been there bonding you together. And then you begin complaining. Oh, my marriage is not working. Oh, my man is difficult. Oh, my woman is A, B, C, D. You didn't handle things the right way as a friend. Scripture says in Proverbs 17 verse 17. A friend loves at all times. And then I discovered there were times are, or are events. This word time here used in Proverbs 17 verse 17 means happenings. These are chronicles, things that are happening. As you continue living with this friend, things happen, things will happen. But you do not do things intentionally to hurt your friend and expect to keep them. No. The word times here means things that are happening personal, from a personal level. And your friend is watching and observing and interacting with you and they are there come rain come sunshine they are there for you in a positive manner this is the worth
of a friend. This is the price of a friend. When, uh, when Paul came to Shove, Messiah was left alone. He was left alone at Golgotha, except for one disciple. And he is also referred to as the friend of the Messiah. This was John, Apostle John, who wrote the book of Revelation. In fact, the Messiah recommended him to his own earthly mom, Miriam. He said, Mother, take care of your son. And son and a friend, take care of your mom. Friends come through during trials. At their own expense, not expecting anything back. They come through for you during trials. Adversity, your adversity and trials are a litmus test for them. You see who they are. You know who they are. You find out deeper. Who are these people calling themselves my friend? Who are these people? Are they really my, 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 my friends? Who are they? A friend is happy for your success. They are not threatened by your success. There is no inner discomfort in their heart or soul or spirit when you begin to succeed. They are at peace. They celebrate. They rejoice. They pray. They, they encourage you. They stand behind you. They champion for your cause. Anytime they open their mouth, they do not gossip against you. They do not backstab you or backbite against you. They have been tested in all these areas. If you hear your friend has gossiped against you three times, just leave them. That's not a friend. Leave them. Deal with them in the level of ordinary monainchi. Be nice, but just, you know, approach them with, with some caution. This is what, what I would advise. Approach them with some caution. Three times, if they gossip against you and you confirm that it was true, just deal them like ordinary people. Do not place them in the, that high, high level of calling them a friend if they have not attained to that level. No one is called a doctor if they have not attained to that level. They have to attain to that level. No one is called a general without attaining to that level. No one can be called a police officer if they have not gone through the training or a soldier without passing through the vigorous training. No one can be called a dentist if they're not proven. So do not call yourself a friend to someone if you have not proven that friendship to that someone. If you weigh your words, can they pass the litmus test of gossip and backstabbing and backbiting and uh, betraying and whispering negatively? You whisper words negatively. You whisper wicked words that put them, that pull them down. That robs them and dresses them and takes away honor from them. And then you finish with that demonic anointed phrase. Don't tell anyone. I only told you I trust you. Don't tell anyone. That's a demonic phrase. Anointed from the pits of darkness. And then the other, the following day you want to show up in their office in their house at the parking lot you're waiting for them at the bus stop you want to hop on a huba for a ride that he has paid you want to eat lunch together you want to go out together you want to travel together 
for, for some mission. Yet, you were the very one who was whispering yesterday to some people. And you cautioned them not to tell him, not to speak about it anywhere. That you trusted them. You're just sharing that as a friend. Which What kind of friend is that? Abraham was tested by Lot. And he proved himself a friend, a true friend. He had, an, he had unconditional love for Lot. And when he heard that Lot was in trouble, he came to his rescue. He didn't begin saying, even let those animals go. That's what caused him to disrespect me. Let him lose. No, he came to his rescue. He fought the people who were attacking him. He rescued Lot, rescued his animals, he rescued his family, his everything, his servants, and brought them back to him. Even after Lot had shown him disrespect, he showed his true brotherly and friendly love that we ought to show at all times. In Islam, they say that Ibrahim alayhi salam was Khalilullah. It's what they say. That Ibrahim alayhi salam was Khalilullah. He was a friend of God. They confirm in the hadiths, they confirm in their books that he was indeed a friend to the Most High. It's what they testify. It's what the Arabs say about Abraham, our father. And the Holy Scripture testifies he was indeed a friend of the Most High. Lazarus was a friend of the Messiah. This is what the Scripture says, that Lazarus was a friend to the Messiah. John chapter 11, verse 11. And it continues to say that he said unto them in John 15, 15, Let's go and wake up our friend. He is another person uniquely referred to as a friend. So very few people in scripture had the honor of Elohim calling them friends. Very few. That's Lazarus, Abraham, and the disciples, the apostles. No one else was referred to as a friend. And today also, that window is open. If you do the will of the Father, you can attain the level of being called a friend of the Most High. You can attain that level. And we'll make known things that very few people would come to the understanding and grasp the wisdom behind it. I call upon us to be true friends to those whom we, claim, whom we claim are our friends. And if you know you're not going to be a true friend, just leave it at, at that. Just be a raya muema, be a raya muema. Do not pretend. It does not bless the heart, it does not bless the soul. It does not edify, it does not bless. It does not bring grace to your own life. Uh, last and not the least, how friendship is, is defined in our generation is a bit disturbing. On social media, they are referred to as followers or friends on Facebook. But if you if you take a swipe and try to find out are these people truly friends? Then uh, you are left uh, with the confirmation that these people are just truly followers. They are, they are not friends. They are just followers. One, two might be. One, two, three. Maximum seven might be. Out of 5,000. Someone can have even 5,000 followers and friends on Facebook. May, might be less than seven. Out of 5,000. Because I've looked at the qualification of a friend in the scripture I've not even mentioned all the qualification of a friend in scripture are way up there they are way up there friend is one who looks the other side and covers your back 
In other words, if anything is to hit you, it will have to hit them first before it can reach you. That is who a friend is. If you are low, if you are down, they will work hard to ensure that uh, you come up again. If you're in a hard place, between a rock and a hard place, they will jump in to ensure you enjoy ease again. And this is what the Messiah has done for us. And he has spared nothing. He has even given his own life for us. He is a true friend. Make him your friend today. If you are complaining that there are no longer friends in this world, there is one left you have not tried. His name is Yeshua the Messiah. Try him today. Try him today, my brother. Try him today, my sister. Give him a try. Just give him a try. Then you shall, you shall affirm. You shall attest. You shall testify that for sure I've lived life without knowing that there was a friend who was willing to show me the true side of a true friend. Baruch Ata, Yehovah Eloheinu, Melech Haulam, Shem Kevod Malkuto, Leulam Vaed, Vashem Yashua, Ari Lehuda, Isha Shalom, Kilo Al Alechem, Live Doye, Vehal Kol Pe Motsa, of Adam. Aberaka Yehovah Vaish Meraka. Yair Yehovah Penabileka Vehuneka. Isav Yehovah Penabileka Vashem Yehovah Leka Shalom. Yehovah, who is the true friend of our father Abraham, bless you and keep you. Yehovah, Elohim is a true friend to Lazarus. Lift up his face upon thee and be gracious unto you. Yehovah, who is the one true friend from generation to generation. Lift up his countenance upon thee and give you his true shalom. Amen, ve amen. Amen ve amen. Oshiana el Elion. Oshiana el Elion. Thank you for joining me. Grace to you and uh, grow to be a good friend to others. Even as you learn from scripture how to become a friend of the Most High. Grace to you. And uh, bless you in whatever you do. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for subscribing to YouTube channel, Dr. Gary Shonodare. It's free. Just a few seconds. Go to YouTube and uh, then type Dr. Gary Shonodare. Subscribe, like. And if you have uh, extra seconds to spare, you can also drop a comment. By so doing, you enable the teachings to go far, wide, and beyond. Because they require us to reach certain numbers when you reach maybe a thousand, two thousand, then it keeps growing. Your borders are expanded by YouTube. They allow you to reach more people. And uh, I think that will be a way of ministering to the millions around the world who are in their need of listening and receiving the, the, the good news. Shalom Aleikem. Aleikem Shalom. A friend who sticks closer than a brother. Bless you and be good to you. Amen.